Hello and welcome to the Walker Town Vegas Apocalypse Holiday Special. My name's Dwayne Walker and let's make 2022 the year we finally start living like it's the 21st century. Please, seriously, I mean, we're, we're, we're like living like we're trying to travel back to the 50s or the, uh, or, or the 19th century. Come on. I know what you're thinking. 2020 was going to be your year, wasn't it? And 2021 has been kind of like a halfway house. I have started doing podcasting. From fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, you are watching The Walker Town Report. And podcasting is something that really kind of grew during the lockdown. And what happened was I was on Fiverr and I started advertising myself for a few gigs. And some of them really started to take off. One of them in particular was me going out and touting some of uh, their products like real estate schools, uh, flooring companies. Uh, but my favorite, of course, were book reviews. And I did a couple book reviews as well. As the months progressed and I began doing more and more gigs, I've been trying to modify them in a way. And I've come out with a, a package that I'm very comfortable with, that I'm more comfortable with now than I was, say, back in 2020 when I started this. And what that is, is doing a podcast where someone talks about their product or their service or their school or whatever they're doing. And of course, we would elicit information on the podcast. And out of the podcast, of course, there would be shorter videos that you could place at places like Amazon or wherever you happen to be selling your, your product, school or whatever. But not everything is uh, necessarily business. I have also some other uh, podcasts that I've done that are just pure entertainment. Uh, for instance, the one I just recently did with uh, Pete Jesselon, who is one of the writers and, and one of the directors of the movie Duck, which was made by Factory 2000, which was made on a low budget, but got national publicity after they were arrested for actually making this movie. We got in trouble because one of the scenes that we shot was in a, uh, a school. And we had the actors, Bill and, and Joey with it, with the actors, and we had them taking out guns. It's a very, a very good scene in the movie. You see them taking out guns and walking toward the school with these guns. And we shot about seven o'clock in the morning on a Sunday in the middle of the summer at this school. But the police saw it. They were, they were tipped off by somebody. And the police saw it. And they said, wait a minute. You've got guns on school property. That's like, that's, that's, uh, that's a crime. So they arrested. They arrested the filmmakers. They arrested uh, Bill and Joe. And I got in trouble. Uh, I, I was behind the camera. So I, I wasn't arrested. But I was investigated by the FBI. And uh, we, you know, we, we, it, was, it was a terrible, a terrible thing. And I've also interviewed other writers like Dan Clifstead, who wrote... Fiona's Guardians, which I'm currently in the middle of reading now about a vampire and her guardians who take care of her and they get paid total wealth, but they have to do a few things that in real life would uh, probably land them in the slammer, but I'll just leave it at that. But when I interviewed Dan, of course, he had some really nice information about what aspiring writers can do to get people interested in their books. And one of the interesting things that I heard uh, was how he would submit short stories to publishers and use that to create relationships with publishers that would eventually pay off when it came time to find a publisher for Fiona's Guardians. In early chapter of Fiona's Guardians, we introduced Fiona and Daniel, her main human guardian. Uh, and then that gave me confidence to uh, publish another uh, chapter as a short story and another. So I think I, I put out maybe 11 uh, short stories, which later became chapters in the novel. And this allowed me to build relationships with publishers. It gave me confidence to know that I, uh, I could get past gatekeepers. Uh -huh. uh, and so then I thought, yeah, I'm going to get a real publisher, a traditional contract publisher, um, and, yeah, you know, and go for that. I started producing a series of videos highlighting certain aspects of Las Vegas, and I started a YouTube channel called Vegas Apocalypse. 
And one thing that struck me about Vegas, and it always has even before I moved out here, was how many science fiction and apocalyptic themed movies, uh, even horror movies like Legion, make Las Vegas the center capital when evil takes over the world. Uh, my first thought goes Stephen King's The Stand, in which the protagonists of the book, a man named Randall Flagg, decide to set up shop in Las Vegas while the rest of humanity was being destroyed. And then, if that wasn't enough, Vegas was attacked in Mars attacks by the aliens. In fact, you can see some great footage of uh, the Vegas from the mid to early 90s being destroyed by the aliens. And this one scene in particular where the landmark is being destroyed really was being blown up, something that we love to do in Vegas, blow up our history. But it was being blown up, and they incorporated that into the movie. And then there was my interview with Renato Tracolino, about his book, Fate of a Distant Future, which looked at the commercialization of space. It's been a long time coming. Um, uh -huh. Better late than never. And this isn't the first time I've done interviews. I've done a number of interviews in the past, mainly at Long Beach uh, Community Television. I was able to do interviews with a number of celebrities like Steve Allen. See our society, America, becoming more rational or more superstitious. Uh -huh. Oh boy, <laughs> hey, could you give me about four hours on this? Uh, I want it to become more rational, but I would not place any of my hard-earned money uh, on that outcome. And then there were other interviews with people like Bo Lugosi Jr., Melanie Shatner, and in addition to music videos, portfolio videos, industrial videos, I was able to use all that experience when it came time to direct the feature-length documentary Wrestling Then and Now, which was produced by Evan Ginsberg, the associate producer of Darren Aronofsky's award-winning motion picture, The Wrestler. Check out walkertown.com and watch my podcast for more fun and entertainment. And if you are a business owner and want to tell the world about your business and need a podcast to put on your web page, just drop me a line at walkertown.com. Let's make 2022 the year we finally step into the 21st century.